Welcome, welcome for this video on Declencheur. Today I want to talk to you about the Mix 3D from Sound Devices. It's a brand new feel in Mixer that Sound Device announced at the NAB uh, in 2011. So it's brand new. I actually pre-ordered mine almost when it was announced because I was looking at the Mix Pre, which is the previous model, uh, and the Mix 3D is really uh, sort of a better uh, device if you intend to use it with a DSLR so I immediately uh, ordered this one instead of, of the Mix Pre that I was about to order. Uh, I know there's quite a lot of interest in this machine so I wanted to uh, show it to you uh, specifically using it with a DSLR and also what I'll do at the end of the video is I'll be doing a listening test so obviously right now I'm not recording with it as you can see it's not plugged in anything uh, but at the end of the video, I'll be plugging in. I'll be plugging it in, and I'll be recording through it. Um, so, what is it? It's a field mixer. Two channels of input. There is the possibility to use the auxiliary channel here as uh, channel three and channel four. But if you want a four-channel mixer, I mean, if you are going to use four-channel often, I suggest you get a bigger mixer. This is really for the one person. Uh, was doing both the audio and the video. I think two channels is, is uh, what you can uh, care about. Uh, if you have bigger needs, you probably want to get somebody else to help you out uh, with the audio. So this is like for one person setup. It's quite small, reasonably lightweight, uh, easy to carry with you. Uh, so it's nice. What they did compared to the Mix Pre is they really improved three things. Number one is they've had it digital outputs. Uh, this output here can be switched to RES3 output, which is what you would use with a high-end camera. Uh, so you would be able to send a digital signal straight into the camera. Again, this is not a recorder, so it's like an audio interface if you want, and it turns it into digital audio, so very high quality signal. Um, it also has a USB port, which you can plug into a PC or a Mac, or apparently an iPad, although I have not tested that. You don't need to install any driver, uh, and it's immediately recognized uh, for that. And if you buy one of these inexpensive adapter, which you plug into the IES output, then this output also become an SPDIF output, which is what uh, many recorders use uh, as a digital input. So uh, quite a lot of flexibility there. Although probably not what you want to use with, uh, with DSLR these days, they don't have digital input. The second improvement they made is they've added many more LEDs here in the metering area, so you get much more precise control over the gains and the way you're, you're setting your gains, which is really nice. And the third improvement they made is they made it DSLR friendly. Number one, by having a microphone level output here, uh, unbalanced microphone level output, which is just what the DSLR needs. Number two, by having here uh, uh, a hole so you can screw it onto a tripod and number three they sell this other prize accessory which you can put on top and that allows you to screw a camera uh, on top here so the whole thing becomes like a bit of a battery grip if you like it makes your camera bigger uh, it weights more I'm using a Lumix GH2 that's double the weights of the camera uh, but uh, it's it's one compact uh, system that can be used for in some some situation so that's the idea. That's the, the big differences between the Mix Pre and the Mix Pre D. In terms of uh, everything else, like the audio quality, it remains very, very nice. Uh, excellent uh, preamp, 6 to 6 decibel of gain. So you can use dynamic microphones, it's not a problem. It can power, fun it can send phantom power, so it can power condense mics. Uh, you know, all of the features you would expect in a field mixer than here. So let me show you how that works. The first thing you would want to do, of course, is power the Mix Pre D, and you do that with those really inexpensive uh, AA batteries. And you can use rechargeable batteries, or you can use uh, regular batteries. And this is one thing I really like. I am tired of having all of these proprietary batteries uh, that never work, with, you know, across brands uh, that force you to buy you know, very expensive batteries that force you to have all of these chargers that always are incompatible with one another, too much weight to carry. So I'm very pleased they're using uh, a much more common solution. And also, I mean, if you're in the middle of nowhere and your battery is dying on you, 
Uh, if there is a house in the neighborhood, you can probably go in and beg for two batteries, and uh, you know, they're so common, and then you can continue shooting, so it's nice. If you need to power the mix pretty for a long period of time, they, they say it should last about four hours with those batteries. I haven't had a chance. I've tested it uh, in terms of the audio quality. I didn't have a chance to test it on the, the battery life yet. Uh, but if you, if they say, you know, if, if that's not enough, then there is the option here to plug uh, your camera battery rig. If you have a, a rig that includes an external batteries, then you can plug them here and it takes 10 to 17 volts, so it should work with most systems. So what you want to do next is you want to plug in your microphones, of course. Uh, again, it takes dynamic or condenser microphones on XLR uh, inputs. You can use wireless microphones. It's a, it's a very flexible uh, set of inputs. Uh, you switch them from uh, MEC, which is dynamic. You can go to 48 volt, which would be the uh, condenser microphone, and also line input. Like if you're um, shooting an even and there is a PA and you want to take a feed from the PA, then you switch it to line input. So that's uh, uh, extra flexibility. Um, the next thing you want to do, of course, is you want to plug your headphones in here. So here we are headphones to go right in here. It's it's a bit of an unusual place to have the headphones jack here, but it means that if you put it in a bag, uh, you know, it's it's actually quite logical to have it coming on the top because that's where, I mean, you wouldn't want the top to be accessible anyway for the knob, so it's not a bad idea. Um, and last but not least, you want to plug this into your DSLR. They use this TA3 input, which is uh, really a mini XLR input. Uh, again, this one is unbalanced. Let me see. Yeah, here we are. And I had this cable made uh, specifically for me because it, I'm using a Lumix GH2, which is a really tiny input here. So I wanted a really tiny uh, jack there. So I get this. Uh, and that's it. I'm ready. I can turn it on. Yeah, Lily do that little dance, and I can just adjust the gain uh, to whatever I want. Uh, and you see it has this thing where it shows you the level and it also remains, uh, uh, you know, the, the one Halini remains on the top for a little while, so you can, you can set the gains very precisely. If you're using, typically what I do is I record the interview, so I would have the interviewee, uh, the interviewer, and I would want to have separate gains for each of them, which, by the way, is a big difference in terms of uh, comfort compared to a DSLR. With DSLR, if you want to change the gain, you need to go into the menu. Here, you just use this knob, so it's uh, much more convenient. But um, the thing is, if you want to use a stereo microphone, then you don't want to use separate knobs, of course. You want just one knob to control both both inputs, and you can switch the mix pre in stereo mode for that. And it has the XY pattern or the mid side pattern, so it's quite flexible there. Uh, there's a low cut filter, and there are all kind of nice extra options. You really should go look them up on the on the sound devices side. Uh, there's a slate microphone, there's a tone generator, there's a limiter, uh, there's a tape return, which is handy if you have a high quality recorder, because then you can listen to not the output, not not what the uh, field mixer is, is getting on its output, but also what is being recorded. So if there is a problem with this cable, uh, you wouldn't hear it because the SLR typically don't return the sound. But if I was using a recorder, uh, then I could plug that in and I would actually hear if there is a problem here or if the, the card is full or anything. The LEDs are super bright, but like really super, super bright. Let me show you that. Uh, if I send them let me send the tone generator. You see, they're so bright, they actually can light my face. And uh, quite frankly, at this level, they're, they're painful to watch. <laughs> so let me bring it down something more reasonable. Now, the good thing is, if you're shooting outside in daylight, then uh, you wouldn't see an LCD. You will see these LEDs, trust me, they're so bright. So, uh, so that's nice. The whole idea with a film mixer is really to prepare the, uh, the sound so that it's, it's optimal and being sent to the DSLR in the sort of optimal uh, level 
And that means that your DSLR will record something that is higher quality uh, than if you were plugging the microphone straight into the inputs. Uh, and the Max 3D is quite small, uh, it's durable, so it's, it's well suited for that sort of uh, job. Uh, competition would include things like Beach Tech or Juice Link or the Bigel Mixer. Now the Bigel Mixer, again, you would want to use them uh, if you have like two persons. Uh, because it, then it becomes one person who deals with the audio and actually mix on the fly uh, and the other person who uh, does the, the image recording. Uh, the Peach Tech and the, and the Joy Sling, uh, they are interesting devices, they're suddenly less expensive, but I've always felt they were dedicated to uh, the Canon 5D and that means to me at least that I'm, I'm not going to use it for so long. Uh, the Mix 3D is a very high quality field mixer and I feel buying this is like buying a new lens. Uh, when I buy a new lens, I know that I will keep that lens over several bodies, so yes, it may cost a bit more than a cheap lens, uh, but I'll get better quality uh, images and, and I'll use it for many years. This is the same idea here. I'm getting very high quality sound and I will use it for uh, many years because it's so flexible. Just to give you an idea, so not only do I have the output for the DSLR, but at the same time I can send a signal to a uh, recorder if I want to, uh, you know, make a backup recording or something. And again, all of the outputs are active at the same time, so I can route my signal to uh, different different places, so that's nice. Uh, I can adapt the limiter level to uh, the specific uh, DSLR I'm using, so if it has more headroom or less headrooms, I can adapt to that. So you see, it's 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 quite flexible while remaining small. Now I think it's time for the listening test. One, two, three. So I'm recording this. On the left channel, there is the Bayer Dynamic M99 uh, a microphone. It's a dynamic microphone, and it's plugged straight into the Mix 3D. On the uh, right channel is the uh, Rode NT2000, which is a, a condenser microphone. Again, it is plugged straight into the M3D, uh, and I'm using the phantom power that comes from the M3D. I've tried to match the gain, so I would have similar level on uh, or close uh, on uh, on both channels. Uh, the dynamic microphone, so the left channel, actually needs quite a lot of gain. Uh, and it's it's almost maxed out, so that gives you an idea on how quiet uh, the Mix 3D preamps are uh, when you when you're like in the worst worst scenario sort of. Um, to, I'm not using any of the low cut filters. Uh, I'm not using the limiters either. And uh, but what I do is I use the digital output. So this goes from the Mix 3D into uh, the Adderall R44 digital recorder through the SPDI half interface. So it's uh, digital out of the Mix 3D and I guess that gives you the sort of the best quality uh, you can get from the Mix 3D. I must tell you that when I connect my Mix 3D to uh, my DSLR, uh, there's, there's more noise. Uh, simply because the DSLR doesn't have uh, such a good, uh, such high quality input and therefore it sort of degrades the audio. Um, I guess in a scenario where you really want top quality, you would want to do dual recording. And this is why it's so nice to have so many outputs on the Mix 3D. Uh, you could send, send one signal to the DSLR and at the same time uh, have another signal sent to a high quality recorder. Uh, but still, uh, the fact is even though the DSLR doesn't have like top quality inputs, uh, having uh, a field mixer like the Mix 3D gives you more flexibility uh, and, and also allows you to prep the sound so that it's better than if you were plugging the microphone straight into uh, the GH2 or, or your, your DSLR. So I hope you 